What's going on YouTube? This is Wraith Designs with another tutorial video. Today I kind of want to show a few people how to take a custom texture and bring it into Unreal Engine. Now I'm not going to be doing this for Unreal Engine 4 or UDK even. Uh, right now I'm kind of going way back to Unreal Engine 2.0. The reason I'm doing this is because this is where I started a lot of my knowledge for Unreal Engine as well as 3D modeling as a whole. This came out around 1999, so about 17 years ago. Uh, this is how I got introduced to it. I didn't really start messing around with it till about 2001, 2002, a little bit more serious. Uh, then down the road, probably around 2010, uh, 2011, I actually really got back into it, learned a lot more uh, than I did before. So I kind of just want to show people how this was done back then. This might actually give you a better idea of how the differences are between this engine versus the new ones. Now the concept's still the same. You want to make sure that your textures are in a dimension of a power of two, meaning uh, a lot of people know that 256 by 256, 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, those are the power of two dimensions. So you want to make sure your image has dimensions like that in pixels. Uh, because if you don't have those, Unreal Engine won't accept your image, even if the image type is correct. Now, this old engine accepts PCX files. The newer ones, usually you can do Targa files, things like that. But I'm just going to show you how I did it uh, back in the day and how it works. So right now, we have a JPEG. or Actually, we have a PCX file. I already have one. So I'm going to close this. I want to open up an original uh, logo of 7-Eleven here so we can actually put this together. So this is a JPEG file. We'll work with that. So as you can see, it's you know pretty square, but you want to make sure first you go under image and go to image size. As you can see, they're not in dimensions of the power of two. So what I suggest, okay, for this image it's more closer to the uh, 2000 pixel range. If you bring it down and then try to bring it back up, it destroys the quality of the image. So if you're not intending to bring it back up, it's okay to go down. Um, but I like to kind of stick around where I'm going to actually be using uh, the power of 2. So for this would be 2048 by 2048. Okay? And that's basically just 1024 times 2. Okay? So that's what the power of 2 is. So you'd basically just double it okay so right now that's what it's gonna be it's a little bigger than it is you see the image kinda of changed a little bit now it may warp your image may, let's say you have like maybe a wide image like a, a cityscape or something you wanna use if you do this to it it will warp it but don't worry when you bring it into the Unreal Engine it will remember the original state of the image all it needs you to do is make this image this way so it will accept it and it will remember the original data of the image it's funny because I think it kind of works with the metadata of the actual image so when you downloaded it as it was it will remember that metadata inside the image and bring that back into the engine so right now we've done that made sure that the uh, you know the images power of two as you can see over here it's RGB color and it's 8 bits these actually can be chosen as well you want an 8 bit image for this engine Unreal Engine 2.0 the difference though uh, from what I'm about to show you to just kinda selecting this was what you kinda want it to be uh, is that when you convert this to GIF uh, GIF file it automatically sets everything up for you okay you can select this but sometimes it doesn't work properly you want to be able to convert this to GIF so to do that go under file come down here under export export as now I'm using Photoshop Creative Cloud 2015 there's other programs out there you can use I'm sure if you're more familiar with it you would understand how to do this process uh, so up here it says format I'm gonna pick GIF the bigger the dimensions of the file the longer it takes a lot of people you know if you got a nice computer uh, that's great if you're just using like an image file for one thing not a tileable image 2048 is okay I wouldn't advise it if you're doing a tileable image because 2048 by 2048 kind of tiling across on an image in the game takes up a lot of memory more than you need you want to optimize your image as best you can that's kind of what they teach you with the new engines now uh, but for just you know the sake of kind of showing you how to do this I guess it really doesn't matter here 
So I have a custom Unreal Edit 2.0 Textures folder on my desktop. I have the originals that I download from the net or I create. And then the edited version set up so that all I got to do is import them into Unreal. So now that I've done the image size and I'm exporting it as GIF, I bring it into this folder. It's already here, but I'm going to do it again just to kind of show you. Replace it, yes. Again, it takes a little longer, higher dimensions. Okay, so that's all saved. Now, I know you notice that it just still says JPEG. That's fine, because this is the original file. Say no, so it won't save the original. I'm going to open. Make sure I have this folder selected. Now you see it's a GIF, okay? Still looks the same. The difference on this is uh, mode. It's now index color, and it's 8 bits channel. These are not selectable, because it's guaranteed to be 8 bits. So this is why I do it this way. You want this like this. You don't want to just select this and be like, okay, I did it. No, you kind of want to do GIF. Maybe you can do it the other way. Maybe there's another way I'm not aware of that it works, but this is how I do it. So okay, now it's a GIF, right? We're not done. We want to make sure that this is saved as a PCX file, because that's what... Unreal Engine accepts. Um, it may still accept Targa files in the old one. I don't think it does. I know the newer ones do, but we're going to still go with PCX. So here we are. We're going to come down here under Save As Type PCX. I've already got them saved, so we'll just do it again. Screw it. <laughs> just to show you the process as I go along. All right, so again, now it's actually saved to PCX, okay? we are going to come into the engine now I already have this set up so it's not really a big deal as you can see I've even you know had the luxury of making measurements over uh, character pawns to you know kind of realistic world scale versus the characters uh, all these textures in here I brought in myself I didn't save this from any other level because levels will have textures included that you can export. These are all my custom textures I brought into this using this method. I will change some things on this as I see fit, uh, but for now, here we go. We got the 7-Eleven logo I was able to put in here. I was able to resize it myself. Now when you apply it, it will remember the original size, but sometimes you have to kind of change it to fit what you're putting it on. Okay, so you can change dimensions. Like let's say I click on this, I right click, surface properties. Um, right now it's unlit. The reason I have that selected is because this is going to be like a light up sign. Same thing with the front of the store or the top of the store. It's going to be kind of just lit up, you know, like lights are behind it. Okay, it's lighting up. That's the only reason you might want to do that when you build light into a level. You may notice some of the textures over here are messing up. It's in software mode. Uh, you have these effects sometimes with custom textures. So anyway, I'm going to go into shaded mode. As you can see, these are still like this because they're unlit. Um, you would want to actually put lights around it to make it look more realistic that it's being illuminated from the inside of it. Uh, I will do that later on, but I just want to show you the concept. So here we are. We got that all taken care of. So you see how to make the textures. Now I'm going to show you how to actually import them. So we go up here to Texture Browser, which is this little picture file next to the speaker at the top. These are all my custom textures. So what I would do, uh, let's say I didn't bring some of these in what I would do um, would be import whatever PCX file I had so again I have actually brought in pretty much everything in here um, actually no I have not that's right let me show you how to do it so I have a Star Wars 7-Eleven promo uh, picture which was basically the art of Star Wars you would get this uh, book or notepad uh, with a deal through 7-Eleven so let's just take that in Okay, so I have this under my package, which would be the UTX file, texture file, that all your little textures would be saved in. So this would be the files that you would open up in Unreal to use textures on BSP brushes and stuff like that. I just put it in my level, just to kind of do it for tutorial purposes. Leave the name the way it is. Okay. Alright? Boom, there it is. There's the Star Wars one. We're going to right-click on this, go under Properties. Boom. Okay, now it's going to have the dimensions, warp the picture a little bit, but when you apply this to something, it's going to be the ori original dimensions. You'll have to try that out for yourself. I don't really have much right now set up to do that, but I'm telling you, it will keep the original shape of the file. You could also even change under quality, uh, the quality of the picture. 
though it's 8-bit, you can still have more detail uh, and more texture quality pop out, more color, things like that. So you want to make sure you kind of do that. I do it all the time now. I just figured it out a little while ago. Like I said, it's been a while since I played this, and there's some things I haven't figured out. So you're always learning something new. So here we go. We got that imported. So you saw how that was done. I did the same process to that image as I just did to the 7-Eleven logo. So there you go. That's how you take a texture, uh, you know, edit it, size it, make sure it's in the right file format to bring into the old Unreal Engine. Now, the newer ones have a little bit of a different process, but basically what's the same is you still need dimensions of the power of two, uh, and you need to make sure that it's in an acceptable uh, file type. Uh, I know they use Targa. Um, they might still let you use PCX, but preferably you'd probably do PNG or Targa. Uh, so, anyway, another thing I want to kind of show off, the background here is all black. What this, what's happening right now is that I've actually made a fake backdrop because I use a skybox. Skybox is uh, obviously the sky, and it's in a box. <laughs> and what it is, it's an effect with a, a camera actor that will make walls disappear and make it look like you know there's there's a sky, like the level's bigger than it really will be. The trick a lot of people use before they use sky domes and things like that. So for the old engine, this is how you would do it. Now I actually put the skybox underneath the level. It's smaller than the level, but all you need it for is the effect of the camera. So here's the other uh, skybox area. Again, I'm going to edit the lighting and all that stuff so it looks more realistic. This is where the camera would be pointing from. So wherever you move this, that's how it's going to look uh, up in the other upper level. So let's go back up here. As you can see around here, that's open space, all that blue. That's basically the, the world that you're working with outside of... Uh... Oh, wow. I'm actually really high up in the sky here. Um, if I were to go out, okay... That's the open space of the editor before you even add anything to it, carve out, make stuff. So anyway, I'm going to click on this right here. This is the real-time preview. And what this does is it shows you what it would look like in-game. Once you do all the effects and set everything up right, these will be gone, obviously. These won't actually show up in-game, but this gives you an idea. Now I actually have uh, audio and stuff going see the stars, clouds, all that. I'm going to go to direct 3D. That's a little bit better quality. It gets darker. It's just how the lighting works with this. So you want to make sure your lighting's a little bit more brighter. I'm going to put up like telephone poles, lighting posts, things like that. More in the level when I'm getting into it. So the unlit factor on the textures, uh, when you select under flags, um, unlit, it will make it do this. So it just looks like it's kind of back then. Um, there's many other effects you can make it look more real. But right now I just kind of want to show you how this is done. That's my own night sky texture that I put together. Uh, you can edit it. Like I said, you can do more with it. Uh, make it bigger, make it smaller. Uh, do whatever you want. Those clouds, that's a, all I did is put translucency on a texture, cloud texture made it bigger. You can change the shape too so you can make the clouds more longer, wispier, things like that. And if you wanted to make water, for instance, you can make it wavy, you can make it go back and forth, pan, side to side, whatever. I'm having this pan one way and slow. So that way it kind of just looks like they're blowing across, like the wind. You can hear the wind right now. You go away from some of them, you hear more crickets, more swamp sounds, things like that. Now I'm going to be putting more textures on the road here, like a crosswalk. So you won't be seeing this, but you'll just see a crosswalk over it. It's going to look more realistic, you know what I mean? I'm going to make an urban setting. Uh, I'm making this for a mod that I use with Unreal Tournament called Infiltration. Um, the one I use is called Infiltration Community Edition, which is a lot of the community back in the day, you know, help these people add stuff to their expansion. Um, it's like a Rainbow Six uh, SWAT team based mod. So you take all your characters, instead of having pulse weapons, you know, laser rifles, and crazy looking characters, they would actually be realistic, you know, military, mercenary, army like people. Like, you have tons of fatigues from every single nation around the world guns, all that stuff. This is an amazing mod. Um, so that's what I'm making this level for. Uh, that's why I'm going to be making a lot of buildings with windows breakable windows, you know, uh, mover mover brushes, which would be like 
this right here let me go to wireframe this is a BSP brush okay that's what I use to put these things together so if you think back in the day like you know uh, war games or any of those you know lawnmower man or any of those old movies you see wireframes and stuff like that uh, it always starts with a wireframe but this is what is creating these uh, brush which would be this right here okay so let's say I pick a cube I right click here are the dimensions you click build okay and see that red that just popped up that's part of what the skybox was I moved it up a little bit but that's how I created these things you basically add matter and then carve out of it you know what I mean and you change what you want and add it into the world so that's how all that's created that's how you bring the textures in that's how you do kind of a few of these tricks so hopefully this has helped people understand more how Unreal Engine has advanced how you know from back in the day you know this is a 17 year old engine um, up to Unreal Engine 4 how they've really progressed and why Unreal Engine is really one of the best engines you're ever gonna come across because it's just it's got history it's got a lot of things you can do with it a lot of applications um, it's not just games you know virtual reality things like that but I will keep you updated on this level this is actually a reboot of an older level that I was making called rural suburbia and then I had a newer version of rural suburbia called quarantine of rural suburbia and it was basically about a small kind of town you know suburbia near farmland and outside the, uh, the limits of the city and a UFO popped up and a flying saucer crashed in a cornfield. So that was kind of the joke of it. So he didn't really run into aliens, but it was a good setup for like two mercenary teams battling over trying to get the evidence. So it set up a level, kind of a story. So when two teams would fight against each other, they were doing it for a reason. So I will do a video once I finish this map in action with bots, with the new mod. So you can see, you know, even though it's an old game, how cool this can actually be. Um, so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something if you have any requests or anything like that I will make a tutorial for you um, I'm gonna you know pump out a few more unreal 2.0 videos how to actually create and add textures and do things like that with the lights effects uh, all that uh, in the future I work a lot so I don't really get a lot of time so if you really are interested let me know I'll help you out there's not a lot of videos out there that I've seen for this old engine because it's old but I feel it's time to bring out some more old school into the new school so everybody sees where this actually came from I've been using this since 2001 2002 so you know hey <laughs> I know what I know and I'd like to teach you guys so thanks for watching my video uh, click subscribe share it whatever it doesn't really matter learn something have some fun I appreciate all the support and uh, I will catch you guys later. Peace.